Well, welcome back to my garden here in southern Japan. Um, I believe we're into the second or third week of this shutdown of uh, much of the economy here, uh, creating a, a very novel situation indeed in terms of work and, uh, and just general living. Anyway, this is the third of my garden therapy series. Um, as I said, the spring is uh, in full swing now, and uh, as you can see in the video, the weather this time of year can be very temperamental. It'll shift back and forth from uh, kind of a rainy, cool situation that's almost reminiscent of winter, and then we'll go into these lovely spring days like the one we're having today, which is just glorious. Um, in the video, you saw me working a lot with my orchids, uh, in particular, this plant here, this is Paphiopetalum uh, armeniacum, a species native to southern China. A pretty limited distribution, can take quite a bit of cold in the winter time. Um, anyway, you saw me repotting that and you also saw me uh, remounting a uh, Dendrobium maniliformi, which is a, uh, a native orchid of southern Japan, uh, onto a new mount. Um, you also saw me dealing with uh, my ume tree. Uh, any tree that you have to uh, prune back severely uh, to contain its size is going to respond by uh, putting on vigorous growth. And in the case of the ume, that's doubly so because it's in the rosaceae, the rose family. And uh, generally these plants respond to pruning, especially hard pruning, which is pretty much what you have to do to keep them a small size, by putting out multiple new growths, many times right out of the old wood. And so if you don't stay ahead of those little growths that are coming out, I'm looking at a few right now. I mean, I went in the other day and talked them out and boom, they're coming right back again. Uh, so you got to keep on that. So that's one of my spring chores. It's kind of like weeding, same kind of thing. Um, and uh, that's pretty much what I'm doing these days. A lot of repotting, a lot of pruning, and weeding. Um, so what else do we see in the video? Well, anyway, a little bit more about this Papafia petalum. Um, this particular species is actually quite, I won't call it unique for the genus, but it's pretty unique. It grows from these uh, stoloniferous growths, these little underground shoots that kind of go out and then start a whole new plant some distance away from the growth it came from. Uh, that is pretty unique for the genus. Most of the paths uh, have a kind of a sim just a, a simple sympodial growth. That means a growth, a growth, and then after this is bloomed, they'll grow another one here, maybe a, a couple, and they kind of clump like that. But this plant actually uh, expands by these extending stolons. Hence, that's why I'm growing it in a basket. Uh, because this thing's not going to want to just grow out, it's going to, going to grow through the basket. Maybe you saw in the picture, uh, the previous basket it was in, actually it's the same basket, um, it was actually growing out the sides here. Well, very likely uh, the new growths that are down in there, the new stolons that are coming, um, will be popping out here uh, in the coming months, let's hope. Um, for quite a while I was struggling growing this plant because it... Uh, doesn't like an acidic uh, compost to grow in it. It wants a highly airy one. These are not really terrestrials. They grow kind of kind of lithophytically, like on mats of vegetation over a rock. And a lot of times that can be limestone. And so the reaction of the compost that they're in, even though there's all this acidic humus, you've got the, the reaction of limestone against that uh, humus and it creates a more basic environment. So to mimic that in the basket, uh, I've um, put in the acidic element, which would be the orchid bark, in this case, orchidata type of um, bark that's commonly used by uh, orchid growers. Uh, coarse perlite um, to give it the, the airiness and the draining. Um, chunk charcoal, which actually does tend to sterilize and keep the medium clean and also adds a little bit to the basic nature. And then, uh, importantly, uh, scallop shells. Uh, actual scallops I ate last year and I broke the shells up and, and threw them in there as well. Uh, and then on top of that, once or twice a year, I'll go ahead and throw a little dolomitic lime on the top to let it uh, get in there. 
And and here is a uh, you know sphagnum moss just over the top as a top dressing in the spring. In the fall, by fall, it's usually broken down. So if there's any remaining, I'll take it off. Anyway, this plant's been doing great for me the last couple of years, and uh, hopefully it's going to respond well and actually give me some blooms probably next year. Um, maybe in the fall, hopefully. Uh, another neat plant I got right here is a cold hardy um, tropical looking uh, bromeliad. This is Bilbergia newtons. And uh, the thing that's nice about this plant is that it can take quite a bit of cold and, um, and yet look tropical. So that's kind of a neat bonus. This can be grown terrestrially or epiphytically. This is a plant I recently got uh, online and uh, I'm growing it in a pot for now to try to beef it up and then once it starts really growing I'm going to start putting it out here and there. I'm trying even a piece up in a tree. Uh, to my right here, this is a this little guy here is a uh, Japanese native orchid. This is Amethystigma lepidum. Uh, this is native to the southern islands and probably the southernmost part of Kyushu, if I remember right. Uh, growing in sunny, grassy places. Uh, winter blooming to early spring blooming. Uh, not native to this region. It truly is a subtropical plant, and yet it seems to withstand the winters here pretty well. This is one I've been growing for, uh, gosh, I think I bought this plant back in 2004, 2005, somewhere around there. And uh, it's just been uh, flourishing. It's not that difficult to grow um, for a terrestrial orchid. Here is one of the native Calanthe. This is Calanthe Takane, which is a hybrid of uh, Calanthe discolor, which is this, uh, well, it can actually be a very attractive plant, but a lot of times the flower are kind of uh, discolored. Um, anyway, that's a common uh, plant of the mountains around here. And uh, also it's hybridized with the, uh, now this could be either naturally hybridized or it could be done in a laboratory. I'm not sure about this plant. I suspect this is wild collected from some time ago. Um, with uh, other species, which is often called, it's called Siboldi in Japan, uh, Ki Ebine, which means yellow uh, Ebine or yellow shrimp root, which is what the Kalanthe are called here, Ebine. Um, and uh, it produces this uh, kind of a hybrid, which can have a real range of colors. Uh, uh, the more this is a kind of a bland one. It's kind of got this lemony, lime yellow color. So it's it's a not a bad looking plant. It's attractive enough, but uh, not real exciting. Not much of a scent on this one either. They can have really nice scents, actually, but this one's not really giving off a whole lot. Um, they can have chocolatey sepals and petals with a nice uh, yellow lip to orangey lip. Real range of colors on this hybrid, but uh, this particular one tends to be this paler form. Anyway, I got this as a, a gift from a student of mine probably about 10 years ago. She didn't know what to do with it. She just, here, you like plants, deal with it. And I'm like, oh, okay. And uh, it's been growing into this big old clump, so it, it's happy enough. Um, and then behind it, there's another Calumphe back here, which is uh, another hybrid uh, with Discolor, but a little bit more complicated. Anyway, uh, that's what's been going on in the garden um, this spring. Um, as far as what's going on in my personal life, I'm about ready to go out of my mind uh, with uh, university, which has all gone online and... Um, it's offering up some real challenges, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to move forward here. Um, I don't really want to talk too much about the situation. Everyone knows what they're in. Um, hopefully this uh, series is helping you um, deal with, if you're dealing with an isolation situation, which I think a lot of people are, that's helping you with that. And also it's giving you a view into the way that my garden progresses uh, through the seasons here. Um, if you look back through the other videos, you'll see the same plants in bud coming into flower, going out of flower. Uh, and so you can get a sense of the, uh, the progress. Uh, this time of year, it's very rapid. Um, 
and it's kind of nice this time of year too because it's it's a, a mellow time it's quiet um you can hear that you know there's some birds but the insects haven't really kicked in yet in about another month month and a half oh wow you you won't be able to hear me if we're, I'm, I'm still doing this I literally will have to wear like a lav mic just so you can hear me over the din, particularly the uh, cicadas. Anyway, uh, so it's kind of a cool opportunity to see the changing of the seasons here. Um, anyway, that's it for the video this time. Um, please come back and, and watch more. I will be making more in the coming weeks. I've been making one uh, got about once a week now. Uh, I hope to keep up that. And um, anyway, I'll see you in the next one. And uh, stay happy, stay safe, stay sane. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.